sustainable transport movement are here today. It's just after a long, cold winter, it just feels like a real homecoming. Someone ride a bike, you have six more years to your life. It's a great opportunity to, you know, for New York City to share what we are doing. We are the leading city when it comes to more a protected bike lane with more cyclists. It was wonderful to see what New York has done, all the challenges, but super success. I'm happy to be here with the United Nations with Clarence Eckerson, the winner of World Bicycle Day for 2022. He's the man. And what year were you? You won. 2021. All right. You're the reigning champion. I'll give you the crown. <laughs> Those of you who know ITDP's work know that ITDP has been at this for some time. The world has changed and the world must change much more quickly as we know because we can't meet our carbon targets unless we make our streets safe for bicycling. It is absolutely imperative that we get safe cycling on the agenda for the new urban agenda tomorrow that it is recognized as a serious transportation solution. Make it more friendly for people to cycle. And we are not talking now about transportation, we are talking now about mobility. How mobile we are, how can move from one area to another areas without increasing the carbon emission. This is a mode of transportation, this is an equalizer that we have to use in our society. We're currently at the first stop of three stops on this ride. What we did was we created protected bike lanes on either side where we could, and we kind of, as time went on, it just became, you had to put a bike lane here. We couldn't argue with the community about parking space loss, etc. One other thing that I want to point out on 2nd Avenue where we started, that's probably the busiest corridor in between the tunnel and the bridge, busy all the time. You know, I have a mayor who I know since 1989 that we've been working together, who a few days ago, he added a billion dollars to transportation to make the city safer for pedestrian and cyclists. Uh, What's interesting now is we've really diverted traffic off of this street. So it opens the door for all of us to think you got a lot of you guys are advocates. What could this space be? With less cars? The first when we first did this, everyone's like, no, you can't, we can't not have taxis on this corridor. What are you talking about? But that said, as we take away space with this truffle paint, we take away space, it opens the the idea of how do you expand out? The public space uh, reclamations here are being copied around the world, uh, and little, our efforts here are uh, something to keep celebrating and learning from. And I'll point out the temporary materials that are out here, truffle paint, these granite blocks here, really cool. They come off of an old bridge that we tore down up in the Bronx. The planters, the bid takes very good care of them. A lot of the maintenance concerns that we have on stuff like this, as far as the commissioner was talking about equity, how do we make this happen? in some of the outer boroughs, that's very, that's the biggest challenge. And we have to figure out how to get these tulips somewhere in the Bronx. I think it was fun. I got to talk to a lot of people. It's always nice to be out of the office and do all these types of things. And it's always good to ride around the city, sorry, and <laughs> see what the infrastructure is like and see what needs to be improved. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Clarence who was who is and was documenting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, thank you very much, Danny, as well. Thank you. you know, if, uh...